this will be a transition between the two talks, the first and the third of what I did and will do. And this also states my call sign, what a lot of I need to receive alpha. And this is about SSTV, which, is, uh, which stands for Slow Scan Television. And uh, why is it slow? Well, first of all, television, I don't know how many of you uh, know how it works. Uh, I mean, this will be about analog ones, not the digital ones we can try to transition to. Uh, you scan the screen with an electron beam. In the past, now we have LCD screens. But the thing is that you need to serialize a two-dimensional area into a one-dimensional signal. So what they figured out that we should scan the screen and uh, actually you have some kind of synchronization signal and then you send the contents and maybe the colors. Actually most people see the screen as color bars but this was photographed with uh, really short uh, shutter speed so that you could actually see the lines but uh, because of the hu how human eye works, you see it as a big picture, but uh, the thing with, uh, with uh, slow scan television is that you don't scan the actual image uh, many times a second, for example, 60 in, uh, in America, 50 in Europe, uh, but you take, for example, more seconds to transmit a single image, and uh, the thing they realize that if you want to transmit imagery, and this is what SSTV is mainly used for, you want to transmit image over a channel which was designed to transmit human voice, which is usually between 0 and 4 kilohertz. It's a really, really uh, small spectrum. This is also the same thing used by uh, modems. So actually what I will describe are modems, but in an analog way, because there is no digital data. You say that uh, 100 and, uh, 1200 hertz, this says that this is a synchronization pulse, this is where a row begins, and then you send the row by saying that 1500 hertz means black, and 2300 hertz means white, and everything in between is encoded linearly. So this uh, step-like uh, line shows you how to transmit a gradient signal. But you see it's full analog, it's really easy to decode and this is basically the only thing that all SSTV implementations agree on. And uh, this is one scan line where you scan a line and you have lots of these to make up a single image. And they tried it uh, to transmit over ham radio because ham radio equipment is usually designed to transmit this 4 kilohertz window, although as you could see there is boundary, so it doesn't start at 0 hertz and it's a, it doesn't go up to 4 kilohertz to avoid filters and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, this is the, the kind of image they could transmit with these uh, black and white things. And this is how devices look because actually you needed special screens because when you scan a screen 60 times a second, it's easy to maintain an image. When you try to scan it, for more seconds to get a single image, you need a phosphorus that would stay lit for more seconds. And they had the small cameras and uh, tried to show you, and, and they tried to uh, show text by writing it by hand and then pointing the camera at it. Or later, Dre figured out how they could overlay text by computer. So it's it's really interesting. I, I, these links will be available, of course, on the slides, so you can check out if you're interested in what, what they actually transmitted. And the best thing is that they survived because they just recorded it on audio tapes, which can also store things like that, and they could digitize it right now, so we still have this stuff. I mean, this is like at least 30 years old. And, well, that was black and white and ugly. So, they, so many people realize we want to transmit color imagery. So if you say that the Android platform is fragmented, then look at this. They have a few methods to transmit RGB and uh, YC colors. So it's, it's, you have lots of methods, but fortunately they realize that if you send a short uh, phase encoded signal in the sort of frequency encoded signal in the beginning about how will you transmit the color, they would recognize it. And, uh, 
uh, well, later they, they made these uh, radios with an integrated small display and a camera. Of course, it was fucking expensive. But right now, we have Android and iPhone devices which mm -hmm. have uh, capable processors of doing this signal processing. They have uh, speakers, they have microphones, so now you can actually just do the same task with a mobile phone with a simple mm -hmm. application. This is an SSTV repeater, which repeats every image sent to it, and that's why I said Instagram for nerds, because actually, for example, in Budapest we have a repeater like this, you send an image to it, it waits, and then uh, repeats the image so that if, many, if other people are listening on the same channel, they can hear it even if they cannot hear you directly. If you can see the tower, which is located on a big hill near Budapest, you can actually receive the image. And of course, everyone will receive a different image because it's analog, so you will all have uh, your own uh, environmental issues affecting it. And as you might uh, realize, many people are sending uh, pictures of women and cats, just like with the internet, so it's again Instagram for nerds. Also, I developed a simple model uh, actually only the modulation part in Python because I wanted to understand how it works <laughs> and I'm also lazy like Stefan so it was like 200 lines in Python and uh, a guy who works at a company that develops software for uh, these automated menu <coughs> system answering machine kind of stuff you know when you try to call you like a company and IVR IVR yes uh, IVR yes in so, voice response. Yeah, interactive voice response. Uh, well, he actually borrowed my Python code. It was free and open source and created this phone number. I don't know if it's alive yet. You call it MyoJam and it sends you an image of a cat via phone. I actually called it and received this image, so this is all real. And this one is just for showing you how an actual call works. So they say CQ SSTV and their call sign, and people respond with another image. Their cosine, and that's how they send images to each other. And that's my latest project. Uh, I got a small Raspberry Pi which is capable of connecting a pretty good camera. This is like uh, one of those in the smartphones, it's 5 megapixels, and it takes an image every 15 minutes and it transmits because it has a, a audio card, sound card. It can be connected to a radio and it transmits uh, imagery of the surrounding hills and there, so not about actual people, even though the resolution wouldn't be enough for recognizing people. So it's more like about the technical proof of concept. It's like a webcam but for radio, so you don't have to reach the internet, you just have to listen on the right channel and within 15 minutes you will get a photo of it and we posted the whole schematics and how we build it and stuff like it along with example vision on that side and if you're interested in stuff uh, we play with SDRs I actually have my hack RF1 if you know what that is it's a new device developed by a Kickstarter campaign and there are also other technologies which says that we don't want as many colors we want more crisp images so for example in radio facts, uh, they send out weather images to ships at the sea, which doesn't necessarily have internet connectivity, but they can receive it over radio about weather reports. And you can also say that I want to do what real TV guys do and uh, transmit the wide, uh, real, uh, fast scan imagery, uh, which is also awesome. And we try to create our own hamnet, which is about. Uh, Making an alternative internet by, by microwave links, since if you're a regular user, you can use the ISM band with Wi Fi devices uh, with like, uh, I think, uh, one watt, uh, 1000 milliwatts. Mm -hmm. But if you have a ham license, you can use one kilowatt on that frequency, that's just a thousand times more. So you can actually make, make uh, quite long distances with off the shelf equipment. So, Thanks for your attention.